Okay. Um, we'll start the meeting. As is everybody uh, okay with the minutes? Yep. Yes. Okay. Can sign so there is a slight change to, to, I, to the June 10th minutes. Okay. Didn't make it to the book because we need to strike Martha McGlynn as clerk on this and put my name. <coughs> and because I wasn't completely paying attention, I missed Matt's motion. So I've made up the motion that's in this here for the draft minutes. And then went back to the CATV and pulled up the correct motion, which wasn't too far off. <coughs> but the correct motion, once I slow mode it on TV, was for number one, Matt Peeler made the motion to approve that the listers extend the 2019 abstract grant list for 30 days. Phil Hobby second in the motion carried unanimously. So if you'd like, I can insert that into the draft minutes and remove Martha's name and make them final if you'd like. Well, that's what Alex would approve tonight or? So approve them right now? So for the June 10th, you can approve the minutes as amended. Okay. But we were By Martha. talking about June 3rd. Oh, I'm sorry. We jumped the gun. Okay. June 3rd should be just fine. So do we want to approve these tonight or wait? June 3rd, you can approve. You can approve them both. You just need to approve the June 10th one yes. with the amended language. Can we go to that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we both approve that. Okay. Uh, as far as adjustment, adjustments to agenda, we do have a, a merit capital fund request which we will deal with after the, after the meeting is over. Uh, Anybody got comments? Dave, you got anything to say? That's good. That's good. So, I guess we'll get on with the. Uh, Gordon, I, I, yes. uh, I just wanted to. I'm always a little confused by what I can, what we can do and what we can't do with the listers. But Dave, in your management update, you do talk about some of the updates, but I'm still, I'm wondering if we're going to hear more about where they are with the software glitches. Uh, yeah, we can hear a little bit more during the town manager update. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, so uh, I guess the first thing here is to uh, talk about the budget update. Right, we're going to come forward. And Good evening, everybody. Put some hands. So we're through 11 months of the 12 months. Um, our actual number would be 92 percent. We're at actually 87.66 percent. So we're below the 92 percent, and it also includes our prepaid insurance for the year. So but also the $75,000 that we put in towards the deficit, we've obviously as part of the 87.66%. So we're kind of below, but yet we're not by looking at all the, uh, the numbers. Um, there hasn't been much change since last month. It's pretty much the same. Uh, this driven it over the budget at the time. Uh, the, the legal fees, finding its office, 21 house, those are what's, what's driving the, the budget up. So it's pretty much the same, same broken record as last month. Finance office, what do you mean? My office, because my salary wasn't, wasn't, was partially in the budget for last year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay. Uh, that top postage up, office supplies are up a little bit from what's budgeted, so that's, that's up a little bit. The listers are only at 78%. Um, so they're they're helping out immensely with the they didn't they had gone crazy and gone over the gone over their budget for the year. So they've they've pretty much stayed under the radar pretty good. So it's been, been a nice help. So the listers incur um, the outside subcontractors' expenses during the grievance period? Um, they will, but that will be in the next year budget. Okay. Because July first will be the start of the new budget. Okay. 
so that will be in the, in the next year budget. Um, the overtime, we had quite a bit of overtime, but not as much as I had anticipated would come through. So that's, that's been, been a little bit of a savior for us uh, for this, this, this season. Uh, the highway budget is a tick over uh, by 2.74%. Um, the drivers there, the salt was up, the labor, the hard pack and subcontract, but we knew that going into it from last summer for the road maintenance that we did. So we knew the subcontracting and the, the um, hard pack was going to be up a little bit for the year. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit over. Um, the paving is done. That is not in this number. Um, so obviously that would drive them up and over even more. But some of that money is from last year's budget also because it wasn't used. Um, the bill has come in a touch over $172,000. So, is that for the shoulders that aren't done yet? I believe it's going to. Does, that does not include the shoulders. Oh, it does not. Okay. No, I'm sorry. It does not. Do we have a figure for that? About $15,000. 15 And when are they going to do that? Uh, the, I sent an email out to him over the weekend. Uh, I was kind of expecting it last weekend, or last week, I'm sorry. So it should be, should be upcoming. So that's pretty much where the budget's at at this point in the time. Um, we obviously have this month left in the year, for the fiscal year closing out. We're trying to collect all the bills to so make sure they all get in the proper proper fis fiscal year and I've contacted all the departments and reminded them they need to get me their bills so we can uh, get the year closed out properly. Does that usually happen? Yes. Yeah. Last year it went, it went fairly smooth. I think there was one one that got a little bit later than usual but for the most part here. And, we, and I, I was able to start the process a little earlier this year because I've been here for a year so that mm -hmm. kind of helped. Mm -hmm. Started and thinking about it in May, and then first of June I hit him. So, yeah, that's good. So that's help. So also in your packet, you got a letter. Martin, right, just be, let me just oh, interrupt for sorry. a second before you move on to the next item. Just two questions there, Phil. The uh, appraisal, they uh, as part of the contract, um, was to sit in the grievance and I believe the BCA. Okay. So whatever the end date on the contract is. Um, for the payments we're, we're, is when we stop payments, but they are okay. obligated as part of the contract to sit through the grievance of the BCA. Great. I believe it's the BCA also that Doug just told me about. Okay. Um, Mary, as far as the, the finance question on Martin's salary, it was under budgeted in the finance department, but if you, it's been a long time since we've had this conversation, but originally, in, under admin, there's 15500 for legal professional services that we budgeted. Mm -hmm. 10000 of that was to be for Bill Hall, who was doing accounting work upstairs. Yeah. So when Martin came on and we kind of started with Cynthia from Nimrick and kind of weaned off of Bill Hall, prior to the new fiscal year 19 that we're in now, mm -hmm. that was envisioned that the $10,000 here would essentially go to Martin's salary. So that makes the, the legal differential even worse, actually, because we had only budgeted about 5500 for legal fees. Mm -hmm. That was up from zero the year before. Mm -hmm. But we've accumulated 41500 in legal fees. So kind of a big difference. But there is some of Nimrick's work in there. We've had Nimrick in, so it's not all legal fees. There is there is some NIMRIC work in there. So to understand what happened there from a budget perspective and how you want to look at it, at the end of the day, you know, you know, doesn't make the legal fee line look good. But mm -hmm. that was the thought process a year ago today uh, on that. Sorry, Martin. Thank you. Um, in your packet, you got a uh, information from GFOA, Governmental Finance Officers Association, mm -hmm. about positive fund balance. So it discuss, and I call it the rainy day fund. So positive day bond, uh, positive fund balance or rainy day balance. Um, and it's a guide saying that uh, 
if something should happen, you should have anywhere from 5% to 20% for the wet. So when you get a flood and you need an emergency influx of cash, you have it. It's just as if you run your household and you have a savings account, so the washer breaks, you, you can go out by yourself a washer. Um, they, they recommend anywhere from 5% to 20%. Uh, it depends on the size of the city or the towns. And um, when I was on the budget committee at the school 20 years ago, they kept talking how they kept borrowing money and paying interest and borrowing money and paying interest to do stuff. So we put together a fund at the school, and I'm sure you're aware of, that now has about half a million dollars on foot. And we started out at 75000 and the wording, we, we set the wording up, and we can do the same thing here. The, the school board can't take the money out, it has to be voted on by the voters. But this can be set up so the select board can use it towards a road washes out, and we need $100,000 to just enough to get, to get by. And the one we built at the school, like I said, started out, and now they don't borrow money. They just, when they need something, they put it out to the voters, and we vote on it. Uh, the paving of the parking lot over there came out of that fund that I helped start many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I had something to bring up that maybe we can think of doing, and it should also include the highway budget. So this year's budget that we're going to start July 1st, between the general fund and the highway is $2.1 million, roughly speaking. If we put away 5%, percent that would be $107,000 if we voted to, to, to do this. So for future, for next year's budgeting, we think about doing a positive fund and see if we can, you know, maybe work it in so that way we don't get caught short on cash if we need it. Obviously, if we did 10%, it would be $214,000. But it, it's a fund sitting out there. Something happens. Have a support meeting, emergency meeting, come in and say, "Hey, we need fifty-five thousand dollars to whatever happen." Roll so is that amount that you want to have on hand at all times? Or yes. Is that you have to have on hand at all times. So if you don't spend that, it just rolls over to the next year, and but there won't be any need to raise. If you want to put a little more into it, we we, we pick a balance. Pick a, say you pick two hundred thousand dollars, and we end up with two hundred eighty thousand in it. And we, at the end of that that year, we can say, all right, do we want to give the eighty thousand dollars back to the taxpayers and reduce the tax rate, or do we want to leave it there for the next year? So, and I think what Gordon is saying is that we, we would have the ability to set a target so that if we were went three years in a row and never used it, then we could say well, we met the target and that's the balance we have and not do it that year. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Martin, I, I'm, I'm not sure I really grasp. Uh, you're using fund balance and the article you gave us talked about fund balances and budgetary balances, but budgetary fund balances. And then it got into sub funds. So I'm a little, I'm not an accountant. No, no. Okay. No. Uh, so are you simply saying we should have a fund balance that could cover the broad landscape of our all of our budget areas. Correct to cover our expenses. Um, the two months expenses it says to yeah. keep on there. So if we need cash for an emergency, pay expenses. Mm -hmm. We say something came up this way, we go towards that. Right. Um, the sub funds. They'd be talking about if you wanted to, to put some just to only buy trucks or a portion of it only to do a certain. Yep. specific reason mm -hmm. to do that. I wouldn't recommend that. I would leave it as a, a general as a general fund and that umbre way you, umbrella for everything. Right. That way you can pull from it as you need it. Okay. Can't we do that already well with taxpayer uh, with a vote from taxpayers with the the a capital fund? That reserve fund? So that's kind of the sub fund that Martin's talking about. Um, so this would be a policy that would need to be a set policy because ordinarily if you have a surplus, it's intended to kind of go back to the, to the, to the voters. So you would need to set up a policy and essentially maybe have the, the voters vote on it. The states that, let's just pick 10% of your budget. So let's just stick with the general fund. So the idea is over one year or five years or 10 years, however long you want to set a goal to get to 10%, you work up a fund balance is essentially equity or, or positive fund balance means that you have 
excess cash. Right now we have a deficit in the general fund, so we don't have any fund balance in the general fund. We do in the highway fund. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, the goal would be you want a 10% fund balance in the general fund. You know, we're going to do that over five years, which is, I'm going to pick $200,000, which I think he said. So that would just simply be at the end of the day, your assets, if I can put this in as simplistic of terms as I can, you, or, or your cash on hand in your bank, clear and free of your balance sheet is $200,000, that if you were to crash and burn, if you have any kind of a storm damage or anything, you've got something on hand to get you through. Um, I understand all that. That's not what I was asking. I was asking about that money that we have used for part of it for this intersection. Yep. There's how much is left? 300000 350 Can't that be reassigned to be that? So right now that's assigned to the Three Corners Intersection Project. So you, the voters have already said that, that you're going to use that money to, to fund your, your project. So we can't use that really for, you know, if we were to use that for anything else at this point in time, it wouldn't be available for that project. So... But we're going out for a bond, I thought. To be determined. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, that four hundred fifty thousand dollars is, or three hundred fifty thousand dollars for the three corners intersection project. If that were to, if you were to go out for a bond, and that were to revert back to just the regular use, the use is kind of a sub fund, as Martin was saying, is designated for capital improvements or capital projects, which means it is to be used for Damon Hall. It is to be used for the rec center. I think that the, the committee at that time kind of made up of a list of 10, 15 things that you know they kind of had in mind that you could use that money for. The other one is kind of like your personal finances. You know, the capital project fund is almost like a think of it as almost you've got a vacation fund, and then you've got they always talk about having say six months on hand mm -hmm. in a bank or in a CD or at least in stocks that you can cash in. Mm -hmm. So if you got laid off or if you got fired or if you you know got in a car accident and couldn't work for six months, you've got something to fall back on. So think of that six month cushion that everybody tells you you should have in your personal life. Municipality is really no different. You know, it's the same concept. Right, so I'm just say, saying $350,000, 200,000 of that, if, if the voters were okay with it, could be. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. then you'd still have 150 for the capital improvements and then go out to bond for this project. I would recommend against it, I hate to tell you, but uh, you know, the voters have already told you, you we would like you to use that for capital improvements. I could probably rattle off $300,000 in capital improvements that you need tomorrow. Um, what I would, and you can, you know, toss this and throw it in a wastebasket if you care to. You know, but you need to chip away at the deficit, so you need to do something. So if you're going to start maybe setting some money aside for the deficit, once the deficit is paid off, I just kind of keep that hanging around until you get a fund balance built up that's reasonable. I, from my two years here, I've seen us go the other way backwards than I have forwards and have actually have money to set aside. The state that we're in, I think that if we were to simply budget as we are, there's enough things out there that we'll probably will wake up to one week or another and it'll set us back and we'll always be kind of fighting an uphill battle. But it is, it's a policy, it is a, it is a goal, it is something that you can think of as a board to, you know, strive for. Um, I think it puts you in a much better position and protects the taxpayer much better than if you didn't have it. Oh, I'm not arguing against it. It's just where that money is coming from and we already have a pot of money. That's, that's all I'm saying. I mean, we used that pot of money if it hadn't, if there was a bond that was done initially for the intersection project, wouldn't that pot of money be 
fixing the roof here and fixing the leak there. I mean, we, I think we would have used it for infrastructure projects. Yeah, does does have to have voter approval. Yes. And that got yeah. reserve fund. What Mark is proposing, but this reserve fund is at the discretion of the select board. Am I right? Yep. So but we might not be able to get up to that two hundred thousand for a while. And that's fine. That's fine. You can get sixty thousand dollars. It's better than nothing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. but yeah. could, no, that could be wiped out in one absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely right. Know. And when FEMA pays you back, you put it back in. Say it's a FEMA event. Mm -hmm. FEMA pays you fifty-five thousand. You slide it right back in there. Right. So the next time it's there. It's there. I just think we're going to have more of those events and. We might want that reserve fund sooner than later. Mm -hmm. oh, I agree, absolutely. But that way it's not coming out of your general operating expenses. Fund money that you need. Yeah. For the day to day. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I agree with you. Do you have a question there? Not on this subject. Um, the Gordon, Mr. C. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I just. The recap of the rate from FEMA has been pretty slow. I yeah, think they yes. said we received the last 20 percent just recently or in the very near future. So to depend on FEMA. Yeah. Don't depend on FEMA for they do come through. They take yeah. five years, but yeah. they do come through. They do come through, but we need to have a hand spend. The thirty thousand dollars that was missed in the budget was that the county tax? Yes. yes. So did were you were you looking page uh, two on the general fund? No, wait a minute. Yes, it should be page two anyway. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is it in next year's budget? Okay. We've already started, I've already built the tax rate. So I have a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. So did you just put the 31.5 in the budget? I did. Well, this year's is, I think this year's is 31.1 is what it came out to, something like that. But yes, it's it will not be missed this year. It is listed as an expense on the expense side. It's missing on the revenue side. So on page one of the revenues, under Windsor County tax, you see a goose egg next to 31500 On page one, you said? Page one of the revenues, yeah. So that's the problem, the revenue, yeah. not the expense? Exactly. All right. We still have to pay it. There was, so there was more than one year that you can do this a couple different ways. How it had been done is that it was listed as a revenue and then there was a separate tax rate to account for it. The last three years it's been listed as a revenue but it did not have its own tax rate. So when we set the tax rate it was minus 31,500. It had the general fund, the highway fund, and the local taxes, but it didn't have a tax number. It wasn't incorporated into the, just the general fund mm -hmm. when we did the calculation. So, uh, uh, Martin, how did the school develop that? How much did they put in? Well, I think the first year we put 75000 into it. Oh, yeah, thank you. And then I think the second year it dropped to fifty. And then sometimes when there was a uh, surplus, they would vote to put the surplus into that fund. So what is that, what's the percentage of that uh, amount of money that they've set aside? So it's half a million, it's about well, $500,000. They get an $8 million budget, so what's that, about 2%? 4%? Uh, no, yeah, 2%. About 2%. About 2%. But it's nice because if they want to do chalk, like last year, I guess they had to replace a bunch of all the valves in the school had to get replaced. 
The valves? The valves for the water valves. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they just took out of that. Mm -hmm. And voted vote for $100,000 for the plumber to come in and do it. And they put all white boards in, I think it was three years ago. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. paved the parking lot and, you know, it just, it just, it's just fiscal, fiscally well because they're not borrowing and paying interest every time they want to do something. Yeah. They put carpets in, I think, five or six years ago, and again, it just came out of that. So it didn't, it cost the taxpayers the first couple of years, obviously, but after that, it kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah. It's taken care of. Yeah. Are you involved with the budget? I don't know. No. No. No, there's really not much left to work on the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The state's pretty much taking care of it. Yeah. <laughs> So is there any action that we need to consider doing tonight? Or is this just a label of best practices and we I mean, it's it's the budget time we should be doing it? Just informational. Yeah. And it um, you know dovetails in with our conversation from the June third meeting, um, the deficit. And I think I voiced at that point in time, or maybe it was after the meeting that Martin had gone to budgetary finance meeting and, and he had come back with that mm -hmm. and I had passed the line and I was also familiar with that as a practice and, um, well, like I've Matt, seen it carried out in other towns. And like Matt said, getting ready for our 2021 budget process in the fall. Mm -hmm. So do you think that uh, we would present this to the voters as a special item or are we going to just stick this in the budget place to get in? Budget somewhere? Is that people again? So I would put the policy together, you know, so I think that the, the board would need to contemplate a fund balance policy in that the goal would be to strive to work towards a certain percentage of a fund balance. Therefore, when you get to that percentage, then it works as if and the other budget, if you're over, then it goes back to the taxpayer. And if you're under, you can work to replenish that back up to whatever percentage you want. I think you need to have a pretty good understanding of where you want to go. And you know, I think you would need to present that policy to the voters at that point. Um, and then if we successfully sell the 20, you know, is this what you guys I think I missed out on one or two of the comments, but if you were to successfully sell the 21 house, there is $38,000 in there for a number to go towards the payment of that, that is in fiscal year 20 budget. So that is something combined with the delinquent taxes we can use towards working down the deficit number that we've got. Mm -hmm. And again, it may be something that you look at and you just try and keep a number similar to that or some, if you feel you, so you want to go faster, maybe it's a bigger number. And you want to keep it at that number, you keep it there um, and you use that number to get to where you want to go. A year ago, I said that should probably maybe be used for buildings and grounds account, but I think that, you know, either one, and particularly talking about the fund balance and working off the deficit and working towards a positive, you know, cash flow, I think I could easily see this being, you know, to get to a fund balance that makes everybody comfortable to work off of. Same concept, just a matter, you know, it's just a matter of the use of the, the money, but I think that that's a line item that you we have available. I would to to, to perhaps get us to that goal. Okay. I think um, my my question not really answered is this a question for voters to approve this concept? That's what I mean. If they approve the policy, then they're approving the concept. Yeah. So I, I just don't know how we would present it, whether we would put it in the, and you know, if we're going to say we're going to put um, $50,000 for starter or something like that, do we put that in the budget? Or do we have a, initially on the first go around, have it as a special item and explain it? That's
best way to go about it. So I think that and it would need further research, obviously, but I think that the policy would need to be approved. It's almost like what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah. So I think that the policy, the concept, would need to be approved, and then how you go about that, whether it's a specific number or whether it's surpluses, or, or I, I think that that needs to be fleshed out a little bit amongst ourselves as to you know how you would get there, but I think that the policy and then incorporated within that policy could be a number until you reach the percentage that you think you'd like to obtain. Sarah? When it, in answer to your question, I believe when the fund that, that Martin has been describing is established as part of the school district, mm -hmm. that the policy did go in the warning and was discussed and voted on as a separate item, and then it's never had to have any, it just goes into the budget process now. But it was, it, and it didn't have to have any numbers in it. It was about a way of, of warning it, and we might be able to look back to that warning, which I'm thinking had to have been like 98 or 99. When, there's a narrow band of years where we can look at the, at the warnings for the for the district and see what language we use. That sounds about right. Those years, yeah. Those years yeah. sounds about right. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Got anything else, Mark? I don't. Any other questions? So this is just something we're going to keep talking about. Okay. Together and put it, it kind of talks about that on page two of this. About the policy and appropriate level of setting it as such. Do you have any idea what other towns, what a general amount of percentages in the state? So I, uh, the last place I was at was Norwich, and they had it, and they at one time had a budget committee that put this together, that, that proposed it, and they used the 15 percent of the of the total budget. 15. 15 percent, and then if you had a surplus and it went over 15 percent. It then would go back to the voters, and if it was, you ended up below 15 percent. There's some discussion as to how you, you know, bring that up back up to, you know, at that point it was kind of, whenever there was a surplus, it went to up the percent, and whenever there were, or if you were already at 15 percent, it would perhaps go back. If it was under 15 percent, they would wait another year until there was another surplus at some point. You know, they were at a point where they had that 15 percent, and they didn't have to set aside. 75 grand every year. You know, they had already reached that plateau, the hard work was already done. And, um, is this an area that the Woodstock voters took um, uh, exception to last year where there was actually a surplus, uh, a rainy day surplus, and they felt that the town was um, penalizing taxpayers by increasing that surplus with, and not really utilizing it. And it was a front page article about it. it was, it was, uh, so Gordon, you might, I think you might have a better handle on this article than I do. I don't remember the specific reason they needed to set aside money, whether it was for road improvement account, yeah. or whether it was just for fund balance. I think it was for road improvements. Okay. And there is a counter argument that, okay, you're overtaxing me today and you're holding on to the money needlessly. Yeah. Um, you know, you're taking money today when you don't need to. Um, obviously, my philosophy, and I think what I'm hearing from Martin and Sarah, is that um, if you don't do that, then the consistency, you don't have any control over the consistency. So if you get hit by an unforeseen circumstance, 
you need to come back the following year and you need to ask the taxpayer for that. Mm -hmm. And so he may be very used to a certain tax rate and all of a sudden it goes up substantially. Um, and you know the ability to kind of keep it consistent is lost. Whereas if you have the ability to you know, put some money aside so that you can react, then you don't need to go back to the taxpayer every time you have a bump on the road. Um, or, you know, again, there's multiple things you can do here. The fund balance is simply you hit a, you know, FEMA come or, or storm comes through tomorrow. We had, you know, we got hit fairly lightly July 1st of 2017. It was $85,000. We don't have $85,000 to react to that. We don't have that, you know. Uh, yet that was a pretty light storm by FEMA means. Um, you know, if we get hit by something twice as much, we don't have the ability to react to that or hold this over. We have to go get a loan or something. And I, I understand that part. I'm just, um, just recalling that there was a downside that the voters perceived, you know, whether it was yep. because of a high amount or because maybe their policy wasn't as clear as what we're talking about and what this paper talks about. I don't know, know the that. specifics of yeah. what happened over there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, so what we need is a, uh, so we're in the process of putting in the application. The application needs to be in June 28th, a week from Friday. So as part of the application, we need a, um, the state of Vermont needs to know that the select board supports this endeavor. Um, so in order to do that, we would need a motion from the select board basically stating that you support uh, the bike ped grant for the three corners intersection um, and we can we can proceed. Um, we are proceeding with that. There are still some uh, it, it there's still some things that make me a little uneasy. I think I told you, I used my football analogy, I didn't use that again. Rock climbing, like I said last time. You get to a certain point and you kind of fall backwards and you gotta climb back up. Um, can't, can't we do a soccer? I, I, you know, I don't know soccer that well. You know, I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, it, I was a little, um, I had some positive news today. Part of what I thought we might have to go back and redo were the easements, uh, all of them, and that made me fairly uneasy since it just took 12 months to do that. Uh, it appears as though they are good with the easements, but again, that's a preliminary response. Mm -hmm. So uh, another part of this is uh, National Environmental Policy Act. Um, you know, you essentially need an environmental impact statement um, because you're using federal dollars, there is an abbreviated one that you can request and do, mm -hmm. um, but it simply still means you need to have an archaeologist come in and kind of say, okay, there's nothing there for us to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. We've already, we already done a historical review, I believe, Gordon, and we may have done the archaeology yeah, review. Okay. So, I don't know, you know. All is new. So there's certain things I just want to make sure that we don't end up back on the 50 yard line again when we're on the goal line. So um, we are proceeding um, until something tells me, oh no, this is going to be really difficult. I got some good news today on the easements. Um, it appears as though we don't need to go back and do those. Again, that's a very preliminary response. Mm -hmm. So we're proceeding with the grant. Um, it is a benefit. It does take care of 80% of the sidewalk expenses um, on the project. Um, it does create another layer of complexity, but I think we can work through that. I am proceeding with this until 
something tells me this is a really bad idea. Um, and I'm not at that point. I, but what I have put out to you, and I will continue to put out that you know I am cautious about this. It is using federal dollars. There are strings attached. There are certain things they may ask us to do again, um, or that we need to do again. But um, at the moment, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic today. So I'm a little bit better than I was the last time I got to this. So um, it is if we were to be able to proceed and be able to proceed relatively pain-free, then I think that this is a this is a benefit. It would probably prolong. I, it would probably prolong this um, to perhaps the summer of 21. Um, they are paving 2020 or 2021. It could, you know, dovetail with that. Or if they're ready to pave it before we are, they'll probably come through and pave it. But um, I, at the moment, don't see any reason not to proceed until something tells us differently. To apply for this grant. That states that the select board supports the bike ped grants. I can make that motion. Ready, Martha? It's going to be fast. Okay. I make a motion that the Hartman Select Board uh, support Dave Ormerson, the town manager, applying for. Is that. Do you want that? No. You don't need to throw me in there. Just to okay. you support the grant, the bike pet grant for support, the purposes of the three corners. Of the for a large scale grant? Sure. Okay. Sure. Through the 2019 V Trans Bicycle and Pedestrian Program for the construction of new sidewalks at the heart. <laughs> three corners, yes. <laughs> I'm going to fill that book on one motion. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Is that sufficient, Dave? That was perfect. Okay. Is I should have said that any better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll second it. I'm sure we have a second. It's the first sentence. I mean, Dave likes the motion because he wrote that sentence, so. Okay. Is everyone good with that? Yeah. I'm good with it. Okay. You're good. You just need to get it. Okay. You come up. So, just to give you a little added tidbit. I'm a little hesitant to throw this out there, but uh, that the breakout of expenses that the engineer came up with was about two hundred fifteen thousand dollars. So, eighty percent of the two fifteen is about what we would be grant eligible for. The way that includes the new part. Uh, including the part from the post office to the library. Yeah, because yeah. that wasn't in. Correct. What part? How much that was? That includes a 10% contingency. That was, that was 68. Yeah. So that portion. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm going to say 30. Yeah. Was 60? Well, I could be wrong. You're, no, you're probably wrong. You would be more expensive. Okay. Notes. Yeah, I got a fair amount actually to go over for uh, manager notes. Uh, so BJ is out indefinitely um, at a minimum of six weeks. Um, he did have an MRI. Um, that's kind of an unknown. Um, but anyway, that sets us back. That's, that's down to, so we're now down to three. Um, Bill is, we do expect Bill back after the 4th of July. Um, but obviously it's kind of hampering our work effort from now until at least Bill comes back um, and beyond. Um, so that is fairly, um, that's fairly big. Um, we talked about 
uh, Brownsville Road and Pike. Uh, Martha asked that, and um, just uh, we are waiting on Pike to come back and do that. Um, the grants in aid, which is the grant money for the ditching work, or put, put it another way, the storm runoff statutory work, um, the money that the, the state has made available. That has come out for the fiscal year 2019-20. Um, that grant is what we plan on doing the Mace Hill project with. So if you recall, and it's in my managerial update, that we essentially need to go back and redo Webster. So we'll use the grant money to do Rev Webster. That's the grant money that we have in hand now, um, but that needs to be used up. So that project needs to be complete in July. Um, there was a month extension on that money that needs to be completed in July. Um, and the numbers submitted to essentially two rivers uh, in the state of Vermont for reimbursement. Um, the downside to that is, is that the money that we already paid for Webster Road is essentially lost. Um, they did do the original project essentially at cost, um, but um, you know I've kind of alluded to them that um, you know look this is a grant project we need to do it right and you know we're essentially a pass-through entity on this. Mm -hmm. um, you also may have seen in the newspapers, uh, President Trump did sign off on the FEMA um, money for the six counties in Vermont. We have a meeting next week, uh, a kickoff meeting on that. So, you know, already we're two months into that. We've essentially recovered is the good news. We've kind of turned the corner. I got to say, I thought the town crew did a really good job. Um, again, with the assistance of West Windsor, um, but only now are we, are they going to come and look at supposedly what should be, you know, destroyed. Um, they will reimburse for what we've done to, you know, rebuild, um, but, you know, just goes to show how long this does take. It'll probably be another year before we get the money back. Um, the reappraisal, Lister's reappraisal, Phil, um, Nimrick is due here tomorrow, Tuesday, to go through um, and just kind of go through what they've got for output and to um, look at what they've got and where things should be. Uh, they're going to make a decision Wednesday um, on whether they're going to proceed this week with the mailing. So we're mailing out a new... Um, change of appraisal or whether they will wait a week and send out uh, one a week from now. Um, I, I'm, I'm left again with a sinking feeling that Nimerick has yet to identify and reproduce the problems that we have here in Hartman. Um, Dave, I, 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 don't, I know it's not your bailiwick, but um, have, have, has Nimerick acknowledged the numerous problems and been able to reproduce them at their software headquarters. And if not, we're still kind of just, I could get vulgar here, but we're wasting our time. Um, so do we know that? I, I think it's a, uh, a variety of problems, Phil. I mm -hmm. think some of it might be software. I think some of it might be data entry. Um, I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there were multiple people doing multiple things. Yep. So I think that, you know, they will take a look at this and, you know, take a look at the outputs and, you know, if they feel comfortable with what they're looking at for outputs, then they'll make a decision to how they want to proceed. Okay. Okay. I mean, the stakes are pretty high if we make a mistake a second time, as, as we should. So uh, I just, uh, you know, there was this paper we just looked at for accounting best practices. I mean, the Association of Computer Machinery, ACM, has put out best practices for this, and it doesn't sound like this company knows how to spell best practices. Uh, so. Uh, well, you know, on the accounting side, they held their hand pretty good through a pretty tough time. Um, this is a different, you I know, understand. This I is understand a different, different the relationship to the state. No, as best as I can. Um, so we, 
So you've got three people, yep. good people that do this every day, right. working on this that are yep. fairly close to it. Yep. Um, you know, our job is to, you know, let them do right. what they do best. And that's what I tried to sort of say in the very beginning. I'm being and, respectful. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, we have confidence in what they're doing and they'll make a decision yep. as to whether to put this out or not mm -hmm. and I think that that's why we strive to have the best employees that we can doing these jobs. Sure. I, 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 please be sure you hear me clearly that our employees I think are doing a remarkable job. Um, you know, and I'm not really sure, you know, again, I'll blame software if someone made data entry issues that sort of are driving this kind of error. Um, but again, I'm just, I, I just, I don't feel like we have assurances yet that Numeric has identified where the deficiencies in, in the software are. So we're just going to jump in the water and magically hope it's, it comes out right. So I'll keep quiet at this point. I, I don't get the impression that that's the complete picture. Mm -hmm. However, I think that there is a certain amount of, yeah, I think that there's a certain amount of trust. And, you know, um, that the three people involved here will analyze this and make a decision. And sure. if they get it wrong, then we we hold our chins high and say, you know what? You know, it's still not right. And if it's right, then we move on and yep. we move on. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be enough bench checking before things are released um, to at least hopefully prevent that. How did the meeting go last uh, Tuesday night? Was it um, the first meeting? I was at an energy committee meeting. I didn't make that. I could not make it. I understand there was one or upstairs two people. Yeah. Yeah. With Doug? Yeah. yeah. yeah well, very well. Good. Great. Yeah, he's, he, he's good. He really kept his composure because some of the questions were a little bit unthought before presentation, but he. He did very well. Good. Good. Um, so that will continue, and uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Um, in the meantime, uh, we are coming up on the end of the year, so we got, um, I'll kind of recap at this in the end, but we got quite a bit going on here in the administrative offices. Uh, we do have the end of the year coming up, uh, loss of the auditors here after the 4th of July. Um, so we move forward with that. We also have the tax sale that we're eyeing um, as well. Uh, towards the end of the month, we've had uh, maybe six people kind of uh, either make an arrangement or have made a payment. Uh, we will have two people um, that have requested a board of abatement meeting. Uh, so you will have a board of abatement coming up uh, at some point in time. It needs to happen in a fairly timely manner, so that will be coming up. Uh, and also know, um, provided that the change of appraisal notices do go out, um, we do expect a busy BCA season, uh, which would kick in about August. So you may want to keep that in the back of your minds as well, schedule-wise, that um, you are all part of the BCA process and um, that would be occurring. Um, once the uh, grievance period ends, which would be in July, um, and um, BCA would then kick in in August. Is there a time they have to be, is there a limited period? There is a time frame to that. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but um, we did a 30-day extension, so that messes things up a little bit in my head, but um, I believe that if it was a normal schedule, you needed to, grievance needed to be done um, in July, 
um, or at, by the end of, by July 2nd, it needed to be done by. Uh, agreements period, uh, BCA then happens in July. And then I think you have 30 days to, so you hear, you actually have the hearing. And then you go out or you choose two people from the group to go out and analyze the property and come back and write a report. I think you have 30 days to do that, which puts you at some point in August. So that's now been kicked back 30 days. So you'll have August and then the September to do the BCA hearings and then write your reports. Um, and again, the office has been fairly busy over there, so I do expect high number of grievances. How many of the grievances go to BCA? I don't know. Um, but that will be coming down the pike. Um, buildings and grounds position, uh, or buildings and grounds period. Uh, the position we interview for the buildings and grounds position on Thursday, we have three candidates that we're interviewing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We had a couple others on the back burner, but um, we'd like to um, kind of settle that and get somebody in in July to move forward with that. Um, certainly the person could help, um, you know, again, just on the cemeteries would be beneficial, not that that's their primary purpose, um, actually very secondary for this position, but with three highway guys, we're having a tough time even getting to that. So um, looking to get that person on board. Uh, the 21 house, the guy, the buyer slipped in a, oh, by the way, we'd like the dead tree in the backyard to go away um, before we take control of it. Um, it is dead. It is kind of pointed towards the playground and as such. Um, highway crew took down one and then decided that the other, there's actually kind of a cluster of three there, that two of them they didn't want to mess with. Uh, we did bring John Dumas in. He's going to do that in, you know, before the closing, um, but after the 4th of July, uh, maybe before, but then it's gonna be kind of tight. Um, there'll be a expense to that. Um, on the flip side, um, I learned today that they are moving out of their house July 1st from Maine. They have asked if they can store their belongings in the garage, um, perhaps for a rental fee. So I think at a minimum, they're gonna wash each other out. But uh, just know that they haven't asked to put the stuff in the garage until they can move in, which I think closing is scheduled tentatively for the 17th of July. Can that be locked, that garage? Uh, yeah, we've got that? padlocks on it. Okay. okay. We had stuff in there that we have started to get out of there. The holder was in there. We got a grill in there. We got some other stuff in there that needs to come out. Does the tree have to get, or the trees have to be climbed to, to drop, or is to, to, you may not know that? Uh, we think that they can be controlled with a rope and a tractor. Um, or they can be felled um, towards a certain direction away from the uh, weed field, um, depending on it. Each of the three was leaning in kind of a direction, so go figure. It's never just where it wants to go, you know. So, Danger. Um, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, that seems to be proceeding as planned. Uh, it did get noticed. Uh, posting did get put in the paper. Um, that is out there. It is proceeding. Um, other than the tree, we had to take care of the window. It's kind of the last thing on my list to make sure it gets done. Um, so we're moving forward with that. Um, the tree, man, I'm not sure if you're still in the cemetery committee, the Densmore Hill Cemetery tree got taken down last week. Um, that's something that they were hoping to do before the end of the fiscal year budget. Um, there's still a tree that uh, needs to come down in the Clay Hill Cemetery, I believe, two trees, but that's in the next fiscal year's budget. Uh, we'll work on that. Um, and we're still proceeding with the other things. Um, Janowitz is set up for the roofs. We're still working and moving forward on the rec center steps and that roof there. Recreation department, um, old home day coming up. Everybody know that it is a 10 o'clock start time this year. Um, we moved it to 10 o'clock last year because of the heat, they decided to stick with it. Um, John Bartholomew was setting up the sound this year. Doug um, um, 
decided that that's not something he wanted to do anymore, so um, John will be doing the sound. Um, everything else somewhat remains the same um, as previously. So are we going to have a float this year, Martha? A float? Are you tired of A repair float? Yeah, a float with repair, yes. <laughs> Can I build that? He's got the flatbed. You've got the equipment. No, you don't have the liability. Oh. I've got a request and a suggestion for Martin or Dave. Uh, when it comes to these budget reports, I would like to see it printed to date rather than last month because just in these warrants alone, it's another 50000 that we're not looking at. And then my other suggestion is, uh, instead of doing this monthly, I think quarterly would be sufficient, at least for the first three quarters. Your budget report. So I'm going to answer the, the month on month. Um, it is a... In order to look at how you're doing comparison to the budget in years prior, month to month is what I would recommend for a comparison point of view. and allows us to get expenses in and put it to the month that it belongs to. Um, I, for various reasons, um, would rather hold off on doing a, you know, something up to date um, just for a comparison point of view. Yeah, but that that's that's for for you, not for us, because this doesn't have the comparison on it from last year. You know what I mean? So in order to so when I look at something and I say, okay, this is where we need to be by a certain amount of time. When I cut the month in half, it's a fairly difficult conversation to have. It may say, okay, this is where you're at today, um, but for comparison point of view uh, and getting things tucked away and, and invoices in that are still kicking around out there, I would prefer to do it looking back on the particular month. It's almost why we even wait to today to do it instead of doing it the first meeting of the month. And why do you want My problem with is, is I see these warrants and I know that they're in this budget and when we did it Previously to date, I could remember the warrant paperwork with the comparison. You know, it was more it was more on our my mind anyway, the warrants were, that were in the budget. So like you mentioned so I'm more concerned about where we're at from a budget perspective. So I'm worried about, and I'm presenting to the select board, how is the, how is the administrative staff doing from a budgetary perspective? So at the end of 11 months, how do we look at, how are we standing, you know, budget-wise compared? So we've kind of, in the last three to four weeks here, we've kind of jumped ahead and I've presented a new discussion on deficits and presenting to you where I think we're gonna be at the end of the year. But what I really want to present to you, and we can do this quarterly, which is fine, is okay, as of today, this is where we stand budgetarily. This is from through 11 months, this is where we're at. So this is my last point. So what, what would it, what did you say we're at, 86%? Yes. Why would it hurt to really know what the number is today with two weeks left in the year? Because it's more than 86% today. Well, I, it is, but we're also farther along. We're also further along than 92%. So we should be at 92%. We've spent at 86% at this point in time. And I can tell you with a surety that through 11 months, that's where we're at. At this point in time, as far as the, this month goes, we got a whole four weeks more stuff to come in. And the comparison is just a more difficult thing for me to present. What I'm trying to present to you is budgetary, from a budgetary point of view, 
And from a quarterly point, I would do the same thing. If you want a quarterly, I would do July, August, September, so at the end of October, I would present it in November. I'm not going to present it third week in October. I'm going to present it third week in November and say, okay, this is where you're at at the end of the first quarter. Why would you want to go to quarterly? Well, for the first three months, everything, I mean, if there's a problem, they definitely can point out one line item rather than, because everything should be within the budgetary. I'm not sure we even, I've, we've done one in July. I think we've even stayed away from the first month. The first couple months is kind of tough because. Yeah, I think it would mean more the less we see them. That I myself would pay more attention to it if it was quarterly rather than monthly. What? Except for the final quarter, is when you're, at that point you're saying go monthly. Or so if need be or whatever, whoever felt comfortable. But yep. And it, everybody's complaining about workload, so. Right, there's a way to cut back. But don't you generate these anyway for yourself? We generate them internally monthly. So. But he doesn't generate five copies and kill them 6,000 trees. Well, actually, it's well. Really <laughs> well, anyway, that's just my suggestion. Take it or leave it. Phil, you forget to sign the payroll, Mark. It's up to the board on whether you want it monthly or quarterly. And we don't need an answer today. Thank you, bud. Okay, go paperless, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, that's not the point I think that's being made. I think the point I know, I know. Well, he would think two points. One was the trees. Today, the last column is. No, no, this is. Uh, that's all May. Nothing in June. Or, yeah, month to date. Is that June or is that May? Last column. All right. June, are June numbers in the last column? There's column? no June numbers in this. What? There's no June numbers on this. Thank you, Lena May, because I don't have all my June bills in yet. We don't need an answer today, and we'll probably, as we go through the year-end closing and et cetera, we'll probably re re really revisit this probably until like August, uh, the first part of August, truthfully, just because there's so much, um, it's just there's so much that comes in in July and um, adjustments and uh, things that once the auditors take a look at. Um, next set of numbers we'll, we'll try and probably make a little bit more concrete um, just to give you a heads up you know, we can do another one in july um, that will give a recap but again that number will probably fluctuate um, before the end of the day dave okay, i think at the last meeting we signed um approved contracts for uh, the Child Care Center and the co-op. Uh, have they been implemented or accepted or are we still waiting? We got one back from the Heartland Co-op and um, I just dropped off middle of the last week the one to Val Rainey. I don't believe she's gotten it back to us yet. So not quite done on the managerial update even though you Sorry. would like it to be. Uh, so this one I just want to kind of bring to light. Uh, again, the Mount Escutney Preventive Partnership meetings have been still occurring. Uh, the last one was kind of interesting. There's two groups, one kind of municipal resources, one kind of wellness. Um, the last one was kind of interesting. Uh, Lieutenant Kessler does, um, does come to the municipal resource ones and um, she does provide input to 
the group from a police perspective. Um, and I think she comes as a Heartland resident as well. She brought a sergeant last time, and um, this particular sergeant has been working with the town of um, Tunbridge. 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 Uh, and I'm, Dave, you might have to help me out with the terminology here um, because it's not community policing, but it's a form of community policing where um, Tumbridge. Information based is, policing. What is it? IDP, information based policing. Okay. Um, that's basically their hot spot, and believe it or not, in their territory. Um, Tumbridge is a real hot spot for them, and um, they did get um, identified certain stakeholders within the town that were receptive to working with the police and were re working from a community perspective um, and putting together essentially grassroots. Um, input for the police. Um, they have weekly meetings um, and there's like an email address and kind of a hotline for Tumbridge people to communicate with the state police on uh, Tumbridge items. Um, the sergeant did say that he would be open to um, talking about this with residents of the town of Heartland, um, at least talking about it. Uh, so there is a group that is pursuing this with the sergeant, um, kind of a subgroup of the subgroup. Um, Tom, um, Tom Ripley. Ripley and Dave Singer and um, uh, Andy, Andy something or other is, in, is, is looking into yeah. that as well as I believe Lieutenant Kessler has said she would sit in on it. Um, to kind of um, discuss that, it's something that if the, you know, if there's enough grassroots, it's something that the people can decide to do amongst themselves um, or push or promote or to work with the state police um, or it's something that the swipe board can, can chew on as well but I think it's something that can you know if there were stakeholders in town willing to um, bring this on is something that they can choose to do with the state police directly and, and you know work in that direction but that was just a discussion that happened it is something that is being pursued further and um, you know again is the, the, sar the sergeant has a background uh, three tours I believe in Afghanistan uh, and, and they use that, that, that MO in Afghanistan with some success. You know, we obviously know it's not 100% because there's still IEDs and still, you know, assaults by actually Afghan troops and, and the uh, rebels. But uh, there has, has been a measurable degree of success. It, their feeling is that the drug problem is, is not shrinking. We all know that it's. Even in Heartland, we have an increasing drug problem. And it's worked in a couple, uh, I think Tunbridge was the second time to get up there. Tunbridge and Middlesex. Was it Middlesex? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, I mean, it's worth a shot, I think. Maybe it's a bad choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a trial effort, I think. Uh, so I think that the meeting that is being contemplated is to bring forward, again, another round of sharing about community concerns and looking at some ways that citizens, that, 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 that um, people who are in the town department can um, look at helping each other. And so things like the, um, the aging in Heartland, community, um, the neighborhood listings, and neighborhood watch programs, and then this, um, this information-based policing models. So several different ways of um, folks looking out for each other and in total caring better for the town and making it more of a personal responsibility for you, a collective personal responsibility rather than making it a government and taxpayer responsibility, sort of with where the tone of this group has gone. And what can we do ourselves as opposed to what can we expect people to do for us? 
Um, and this was this is an interesting model that's going on, um, and it does sort of have this blend of um, actual interface with the state police as well as community responsibility. But it's not the only uh, conversation and community engagement component being looked at. Well, but that's. People there's no date for this. Really thoughtful. There's no date for this meeting. Um, there, that's getting worked out right now. It's there, I've saw emails flying back and forth in the last two days about it, but but a date has not been set. It's the next step in this is that the other group. So sort of, this was the municipal infrastructure group, or the, the other part is sort of the services and people group, has a meeting on Thursday this week, and folks were going to come from the municipal group to talk to the other group. So those two groups would have talked about this first, and then look at setting a meeting. <coughs> That's how much you remember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the way it seems to be unfolding. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I, I don't know if we should let sleeping dogs lie, or as a select board, we should have a conversation before July 9th amongst ourselves on um, the school safety issues. Um, and I know we've been requested to attend, but are we attending as individuals just listening, or are we attending for you know, to be called upon to give an opinion? And I think uh, what Dave and Dave and Sarah have just brought up is, is, is a very important aspect of the community feeling safe. Uh, a community resource officer is maybe part of the equation, and, but you know, we, we should be looking at doing, doing other things as well, which I think we're starting to do. You know, a point came out that, that was... That, that it isn't just the staff at the school, the teachers, the administrative staff, but some of the children are actually afraid of going to school because they see cruisers there and they see all of a sudden a police presence, not on a timely basis, but on a reactionary basis. And I, I just point that out, so I think we all should keep that uh, in the forefront. The kids, the kids should not be afraid to go to school. It's so sad. I guess I'm just hoping for that meeting there's able to be some work done to understand what problem are we trying to solve. Yeah. I, feel, I feel very strongly that right now we're, we're in a reactionary mode for, for good reason. Um, and. Uh, we haven't really stepped back to sort of answer that fundamental question of just what, what, what would make Harlan feel like a safe community. Could be policing, could be some of these uh, uh, hybrid police community sort of projects. Um, it could be a, the aging and heartland network sort of it's just getting stronger so i think it's 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 you know, we have to keep our eyes open and actually know what the heck we're going to be talking about so. you're done food for thought on the coming up on the agenda at some point soon is the Vermont State Police contract. So just know that that is coming up. Um, <coughs> Dave, are you going to talk to uh, about the two river changes? Oh, uh, not really. Okay. Uh, it's in your pack. I mean, I can. I kind of put it in there as communication. Um, I believe that there is a um, meeting July 10th. Um, a, a regional plan meeting upstairs on the 10th. I think there's also a Mount Scotty meeting that night as well, but um, there is the Two Rivers does have this booked for the 10th. Um, I see this as simply them catching up with the town plan. Okay. For the most part. I think that everything I'd have to talk to Jay a little bit, but um, you know the industrial sites are, I believe, in the town plan, um, and the village designations are already 
we've had village designations for a while now. Right. Um, so I saw those two things stuck out at me um, as them catching up to where the town plan is. Okay. Okay. But I could be wrong. I mean, I, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. And, and Corey, I can just give a two-sentence update on the Energy Committee, and it's, it's kind of related to the mapping that the Two River. Um, uh, as we know, we've uh, enabled the Energy Committee to work with Two Rivers and our Planning Commission to come up with a new energy chapter. Um, uh, they are reviewing um, the current energy chapter and, and updating it to current standards, but they also would be using the new mapping that's, that's emerging for potential siting of, of, of solar and perhaps wind. I think wind is very, very low priority. But they're moving, they are moving along and making progress, which is happy to see.